Thank you very much, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I give honor to the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I give honor to our Bishop, Jacqueline and Ima Kala, to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Maria A. Seaman, Head Elder Kent Seaman, to all the elders, the ordained clergy, the deacon board, senior leadership, saints, family, and friends. I greet you tonight with the joy of the Lord. Tonight, we're going to begin with our sanctification confessional, which will appear on the screen in front of you. And as you remain on mute, we're going to ask you to say it. Let's say it together. I am a sinner saved by grace. I was guilty of sin and I cherished it. My life was a willful offense to God. I didn't want him and didn't care if he wanted me. But despite my depraved existence and my evil and selfish ways, because of his grace and mercy alone, he chose me. My salvation is only because he drew me to himself. I was spiritually dead and he awakened my spirit to be attracted to him. Now he wants me to know him and to have eternal life through him. He wants me to change through the process of sanctification and be more like him. But I have tried and know I am incapable of sanctifying myself. I want to sin because my sin nature is still alive. In my flesh is no good thing. My flesh is hostile towards God. It is an active enemy of God. Nothing I do will sanctify me. Performance, good works, talents, and gifts do not qualify me. I can only be sanctified through his word and truth. I must commit to this process, dying daily to my fleshly ways and ideas. When I embrace the sanctification process daily, it will gospelize my life. I will be a new creature. His death, burial, and resurrection guarantee I really can have a different kind of life. Therefore, I pray for the word to seize my heart, to conquer the filth of my mind, and to capture the longing of my soul. I want to be sanctified. I need to be sanctified. I am determined to be sanctified. And now we're going to begin our lesson for this evening. And as usual, we begin with a review. And tonight reviewing for us is going to be our Reverend Stephen Trott. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Well, we're gonna do our review for our question two. Uh, lesson three, let's go over question number two. Let's read it all together. What rule has God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him? And the answer is the word of God, which is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament in the only rule to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him. Well, last week, we talked about the Bible and we learned about three important characteristics. We learned about the first one was infallible, the second was the clear, and the third was sufficient. A characteristic is an intricate part, a distinguishing feature of the nature of something. Let's talk about the first one, infallible. Infallible, we they said it was not capable of errors, it was flawless, 
is certain, sure and true, completely reliable and trustworthy and unchangeable. We came to the conclusion, so everything that the Bible says is true. This does not mean, however, that you can take every statement of the Bible as true apart from its context or out of context, out of the sentence. And we did have a few illustrations last week. Infallible, only when we read the whole Bible and understand what it means, can we say that every statement is infallible. The flawless, true, trustworthy, unchangeable word of God. And the second characteristic was clear, not obscured. It was plain, evident to the mind. And God, by his Holy Spirit, can and does lead ordinary people to understand quite clearly the things that they need to know to be saved. And when we talked about clear, uh, something is not all only that pastors and priests and scholars can understand the Bible. It's not just them. Okay, the third Bible characteristic was sufficient. Uh, we went into detail and we, as we talked about the sufficient things of the Bible and all that is needed, meaning all that is needed, it fulfills and we concluded that the Bible is enough. We also talked about the denial of the sufficiency of the Bible. We did have uh, illustrations or example of denials of the Bible. The Roman Catholic Church says we need tradition as well as the Bible. The Mormons say that the Book of Mormon is needed as well as the Bible. And we also talk about the modernist who tells us that we need to find, need the findings of science as well as the Bible. And we did have some good discussions in our group about that. Sufficient. The man who has the Bible says the Bible itself is enough. And the scripture text that we came to use, here begin at the reading of God's holy word, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And he also talked about those that say, what about the creeds, the confessions, and the catechism of reformed churches? We talked about this. Well, we must always remember that these stand far below the Bible. They are not intended to be and must not be treated as if they are equal to the Bible in any way. We use them as convenient summaries of teaching of the Bible. They do not add to nor take away from anything that the Bible says. Thank you very much, Reverend Trott. We appreciate you. You're welcome. And so now we're going to go into question three. And our catechist for tonight is Reverend Danielle Vaughn. So Reverend Vaughn, take it away. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Pastor. Tonight, we're going into question three. Before we go into that, uh, we're going to just open up with some a word of prayer, and then we'll go right in. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that through it all, you're, you are with us, Father God. Father God, you know every need, Father God, that is spoken or, or, and unspoken, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that before I even begin this teaching, Father God, that you wash me afresh, Father God, cleanse me by through your blood, Lord God, that I may stand before your people, Father God, and teach them, Lord God, with excellence, Father God. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, as stated, um, we're going into question three. Question three is, what do the scriptures principally teach? And the answer is, the scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. Our overall theme is the purpose of the Bible. And our key scriptures, our key scriptures uh, come from John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And many other signs truly did Jesus 
in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And the second key scripture comes from Micah chapter 6, verses 8. He hath sh showed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the God. There are many things that we cannot learn from the Bible. One is that the Bible does not provide us with a complete history of the human race. This is not what the Bible was given for. There are, there are many other things in history that we can learn from, from other sources. We have the internet, um, we have multiple books, we have museums, uh, we can go to school. Um, all, these, all these things we can use to learn about the history of the human race. But like I said, that's not what the Bible was given for. It does not provide us with a complete history. The second one is that the word of God provides, doesn't provide us with uh, technical information needed um, in the various sciences, meaning that it doesn't have any chemical formulas. Um, it doesn't talk about the intricacies of the various sciences, you know, how cells work and, and all the things that, that happen, you know, within nature. And the third one is that the Bible does not even provide us with all the information that we might wish uh, concerning Jesus. Uh, we don't know much about his boyhood, you know, just a couple of points within the Bible. We, we see Jesus as a baby, as he's brought to the temple, and we see him as, as an adolescent um, when he goes to the temple again. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any other history about his life as he grows grows through adulthood until we meet up with him to, at, at about the age of 30. Um, we don't know anything about his education or his home life or even his physical appearance, what he looked like. That's, that's what we do not learn from the Bible. But the Bible was not given in order to teach us everything. It was given to teach us what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. The Bible is essential to all true knowledge. Although the Bible does not teach us everything, it's important to note that the Bible does have something to say about everything. Its message is so important that without what the Bible says, we cannot really have a true understanding of anything. So let's, let's illustrate. In figure 3.1, we have a picture of a man as he seeks to understand the world and himself without reference to God. And he is living in a state of darkness. Uh, this could be anyone in any sphere of life. Uh, it could be a modern scientist who believes that the world just happened uh, to be here because it evolved through time. And at the beginning of his study to try and understand the world in which he lives, he just leaves God completely out. Um, the same would apply to those who study history or geography or philosophy or anything like that, any other subject. As long as they leave God out of the picture, then they remain in darkness. And without an acknowledgement of God, man, man continues to live in a state of darkness. And Psalm 107, 10 to 12 states that those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. The Bible clearly teaches that everything in the universe is created by God. Everything is related to God, and it is this relationship to God which is most important of all. 
And we have some scriptures that, that back that up. Uh, we have Hebrews 11, verse 3. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And Colossians uh, 1, 16 to 17. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things hold together. And then we have John chapter one, verses one to three. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So it's important to note that without this relationship being recognized, that God is the creator of all things, even the greatest man doesn't really understand the truth at all. He can have all the knowledge or information um, this world can have to offer, but it, unless he unless he knows the God of the Bible, that he will forever remain in darkness. When men do not begin their thinking with a recognition of the true God, they are in darkness. Because they are in darkness, they cannot really see the light that is in the world. And some more scriptures that back that up. We have Matthew 6, 22 to 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And we have Psalms 107, verses 10 to 12. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. And another one, at John 1, verse 5. And the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. So in the first figure, we had the man who does not know God and remains uh, in darkness. And in figure 3.2, we see a picture of a man who has come to see the light. It is the Bible that has given him this light because the Holy Spirit has regenerated his heart so that God's word is received and believed. This represents a man who has come to the light. So we can see in the picture here that as, as, as this man reads the Bible, that the light of the, the light of the world word comes to him. He no longer remains in darkness. And we have some more scripture that backs that. Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. And Psalms 36 verse 9 says, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. And John 12 46 says, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Some points to note here is first, we notice how a knowledge of the Bible given by the Holy Spirit enables this man to believe in the true and living God. But these, John 20 and 30 says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus Christ, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And the second point to note is we see how he is then able to understand his place in the world. He is able to understand that this is his father's world 
and that he must always seek the glory of God in everything that he does in this world. And 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So if this man was a scientist, he would study things in order to see more of God's wonderful creation. If he is a historian, we'll, we will study the history of the human race in order to understand the unfolding purpose of God. This holds true in every sphere of life. When we have the word of God in our lives, we understand our place in the world and seek the glory of God in everything that we do in life. So in closing, we go back to question three. What do the scriptures principally teach? And the answer is, the scriptures principally teach what man is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of man. And Elder Haywood, I'm handing it back to you. Thank you very much, Reverend Warns. Let's give her a round of applause. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Warns. At this time, we're going to entertain if there are any questions or any comments at this time. And if not, we will turn it back over to Pastor Seaman. Pastor Seaman, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Haywood. And thank you, Reverend Vaughn. Amen. Clear teaching. This is not complicated. It's beautiful. Maybe because I'm simple and I got the Holy Ghost. Somebody going to get that. Huh? The Holy Spirit. You know, church, how kind our Father is in that he loves all his children so that he makes it that all of the children can know the scriptures. If it were up to the scientists, if it were up to the intellects of today, we will be experiencing in Christendom what we're experiencing in the world. Now, this is just coming on me. I haven't written this down. I'm, I'm speaking this by the Holy Spirit. I want somebody to get it. Do you know who we're paying attention to today? Scientists and rich people, people who have enough money to be heard. This is not of God. I didn't say God is not going to use them. Of course, I'm a scientist. I believe in that. But it's the order of which we do things. Because as the teaching did say, which I put down lower in my notes, last probably, everything that we filter is through God's word. Well, let me share some of my goodies that I got while listening to the beautiful teaching. Of course, yes, yes, the Bible, what it means, what it says. This is, this is interesting stuff, folks. Listen, um, well, I love the fact that we are to do good, love mercy, and walk humbly. Because I don't know about you, I required a whole lot of mercy. <laughs> God took care of me way early and on through my ensuing years as a teenager. Had to take care of a lot of my genetics, folks. God have mercy on me. I'm talking about me. If I got a drunk in my DNA, got a loves liquor and smoking and stuff. Got a gambler. Yeah, I'm just gonna testify about me because I don't mind it. Gambling. Hmm. I'm talking about straight up in my DNA. So it's God's mercy that he showed towards us. And so now that God has shown us his mercy, what ought we to do? But echo right back. Give him the boomerang. Echo back what he's given to us. Thank you, God. All right. What else did I did the pass to get? Um, yeah. What the Bible doesn't say. You know, folks. Most people who are anti-God, anti-Bible, ain't got time for Christians, is because they're looking for answers for everything. They're looking for answers for everything. I was driving to mom this morning, and this just fits right in. <laughs> I was listening to a certain station, and the talk was about the history of man, history of slavery. 
come on, some of you might have heard it, right? You know, and you had these different callers coming and giving different angles. I said, oh, no, I ain't touching that one for 10 for poo. I ain't getting no trouble. Because here's what I recognize. Listen, you know what history begins with? In the beginning. In the beginning. So as far as mankind can go, they can go back to the beginning. So I'm going to trust the creator of the beginning. That's God. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Super. Hey, yeah. I mean, just this morning, you sh it was a hot. I said, oh, boy, look at them. Think they know God. They, they don't know God's word. I'm not going to focus on this person's beginning and that person's beginning as much. Now, I'm not going to say the reality of where people come from doesn't matter. It does. However, that's not my focus because for God so loved the world. That's, that says it right there. Anyway, I, you see me, I get excited. Oh, my goodness. What, do we, what else we got here? I cannot read my handwriting. Oh, science, right. We, we don't, we don't put all our eggs in the basket of science. Why? Again, because the scientists were born, they're, they're man. They were made of God. And, and here's my key thing I always say with science. They discover, which means they uncover in the process of time what God had covered. That's why we keep on discovering more because God gives the intellect to mankind. So I'm trying to say everything still goes back to God. That's what I'm saying. All right. So whether you're Japanese, who are companies, you remember you say that? Acha racha, liba racha, I love you. I remember that. No matter where you come from, <laughs> hey, it's God. Glory to God. And Deacon Stephen, I see you got something there. All right. All right. And then right we don't know everything about jesus now you know we don't need to know everything about jesus because with what we know concerning his birth and his childhood people go people go all over the place can you imagine if the bible talked about jesus during puberty oh lord have mercy jesus help me right there lord during hormonal changes but, but, okay, I'm a scientist, but I'm going to need that to learn. Imagine. Right? Mm. So it really speaks to the fact that we are a people of faith. We believe what we must believe. Where's the Bible taking us? All right. So the Bible doesn't have to say everything about everything. Now, out here, but do me a favor, if you can, if you can, can you go to figure 3.1 for me? Can you pull that up? I don't know if you can, but if you can, because I saw something here, you know, see even likes a picture. Figure 3.1. The guy in darkness, right? The guy in darkness. Yeah, yeah. The guy. Listen to me. The, it's clear, folks. Look at the picture. Figure 3.1. This guy is behind bars. He's in jail because he's in darkness. My God. Sometimes we waste our time talking to people who are in jail. People behind bars. They're not standing on the word of God. They're in darkness. They're in jail, folks. And sometimes we just got to leave them. Let them experience their jail. They may have a jail break. They may have a jail praise. But it's just not right now. So let's go fishing for some others. Thank you for that, Elder Haywood. <laughs> That's what life looks like without God. Jail. <laughs> you know, we're seeing, he set me free, yeah. He set me free. He broke the bounds of oh, prison. Th th we're free. Because we know Jesus. We know Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the son of the living God. <laughs> All right, I'll carry on. So, mm, mm, yes, yes. The universe created by God. Now, here's what, remember, God says that when we look at the universe, it's evidence that there is a God. Now, when you look at the universe, you actually see orderliness. You see how cells are, cell structures, you know, the nucleus, the electrons orbiting. So, you just focus on what you can control, the sun, the moon, the stars, and it says you can't control God. 
all right you cannot control god now what i say oh yes mm, i got this right here folks this this look catch this catch this catch catch okay there you go listen listen i got this and i was i was excited so i'm going to explain it to you now in colossians that scripture i forgot to write it exactly down but you all heard it. in colossians talked about God holds all things together by the power of his mouth, his word, right? He holds all things together. So, sila, think on this. The more that the human beings come against what God has, there are things that should be held or held together break apart. Can somebody say earthquake? Somebody, can somebody say tornado? Come on, come on, come on. Hey, hey. The more that we speak against what God holds together, how dare the earthlings speak against the creator? You think the earth is not going to rebel in some way? That's why we pray. You, you think I, I pray, God, keep this eye and keep the Christians Christianized. Because <laughs> we're just a little... Not even a dot, folks. We've been magnified to make us look big by a dot. And so we, we got to keep that in mind. Keep That's why we got to speak. We got to pray and praise and worship. Because that's when we recognize I, I'm worshiping the creator who holds everything together. Wow, wow. And then dark thinking is thinking without God. When you think outside of God, like the guy in the jail. That's dark thinking. So there are going to be these dark ways of the world. It's just going to get darker and darker and darker because man want to be in control rather than understanding that they'll never have ultimate control because God is God and God is God alone. All right? Um, <laughs> and darkness will never comprehend light. If they're not ready to receive, you can speak in tongues, speak the Bible in English. They're not going to receive. So you got to watch where you're casting your pearls, folks. And uh, ask God for leadership and guidance by the Holy Spirit. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, yeah. He regenerates and brings things to light. Ow! Now, you know I love me, my Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Always talking. He's always talking. Matter of fact, he's, he's gonna, when I get to heaven, he won't be there, but Jesus and God will be there. They'll be able to speak. Cause they're the same. And they're going to say, you know, there are about 1,500 books of notes that I provided for you, giving you insight through the day, and you forgot to write them down. They're going to tell me, he's going to tell me off. God's going to tell me off. Because he regenerates, he gives insight. It's amazing. The Holy Spirit, oh, this is, yeah. The Holy Spirit versus many spirits of today. Come on, you know, and Bermuda. Bermuda, hey, under the motherland, yes, but let me tell you, it was Christianity is what we grew up on. Now we got, listen, we got all types of God, the big fat Buddha one, the Indian, all types of gods come into this island. That's why Christians need to pray more because the, 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 the battles intensify, right? And so, therefore, some of our people, now you know what I mean by our people, so I'm going to just say, some of our people have gone into mysticism, spiritualism. Why? Let me tell you why, because some of you may fall too, and I don't want you to, because they get disappointed in man and don't understand God ain't man. So they leave the church, they leave religion. No, no, don't do that. Go find another church, but don't leave God. Don't go into mysticism. And spirits, you know, all this type of spooky stuff, right? And so all that we do, we must do to God's glory. In other words, we filter everything. And I, I think that's so much pressure. At least it is for me. I'm constantly thinking, I'm like, oh boy, I missed that thought. Oh, you know, everything we do, we, we have to filter it by God. God's glory. Does this glorify God, what I'm doing? Does this glorify God? Does my motive, God, God, Holy Spirit, my advocate, you're representing me before the Father. Please, may you be pleased with my praise and 
please with my worship and please with my study. You help me. That's the way I talk to God. Just like that. Just like that. I need your help. I really do. You know, I'm already thinking because I, I multitask, right? So even while the teaching's going on, I say, yeah, Maria, don't begin your sermon tonight because you got to go to a, a, a drum rehearsal tomorrow. You only need to hear, there to hear one drama. So all the rest I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing my, my introduction and stuff. <laughs> That's the way I tick. But I'm telling you, I, I can do a sermon and noise and everything. It don't bother me one bit once I'm zoned in, right? But I'm always thinking, folks, everything I do. Am I perfect? No. No, I'm still being sanctified. Hey, still being sanctified. That's exciting. Still being mad. Still missing it. So I'm being mad. But I ain't mad about missing it. I'm happy that I'm being mad. Oh, it's different. Hallelujah. So those are my notes, and I see some of you have written, so I'm going to share the few or so um, notes that you have shared while we are live. Amen. And again, thank you to Reverend Vaughn's uh, for that teaching time. I tell you, I love the word. I love the word. And it doesn't matter who teaches, you know, oh, that's, oh, yeah, I missed my opportunity. Put our hands together <laughs> for our teacher, our catechist. I like that word. I don't know why. Catechist. I like that. Our catechist for the night. All right. We thank God for you. Let's go to some more comments now. Amen. Let's hear what you guys are saying. Hallelujah. Okay, Deacon Stephen, Reverend Stephen Trot. I got that point when it was said the Bible was not given in order to teach us everything, but to teach us what man is to believe concerning God and our duty. Yeah, yeah. And that's our answer for today. Beautiful. Our duty. What is duty? And man's chief hand. Amen. Dr. Woods, Elder Dr. Woods. We know everything we need to know <laughs> in order to be saved. You know what I, that just sounded like? What a mama says and a parent said, you know what you need to know. Just do. And that what we tell our children? You have enough information. Just do what I say, please. I know I've said it over and over and too many overs. Lots of overs. And that's the way God wants us to trust him. Thank you for that, Reverend Stephen Trott. Without God, the greatest, hey, <laughs> the greatest man will not understand the truth. That's it, the truth of the word of God, because they're trying to understand it technically. And you have to understand it, understand the truth by faith, by faith. What? Amen. Deaconess Arlene De Silva. Christian is our foundation. That's right. We must hold on to it. It's part of our culture. Yes, it is. Must not lose it like we've lost so much of our culture today. That's the truth. And that's why we've got to st um, stay with the church. Absolutely. Uh, superintendent, so glad we that we are. I knew you was. I knew. I, I almost wrote that down. Matter of fact, I was supposed to remember it, so I'm kind of mad now. So glad that we are reading the word in context, Sunday school, for understanding of God's heart. And I actually thought, because I'm her scribbling down my notes, I said, this is how they're doing it in Sunday school, taking notes. The note taking's excellent. That's how we tell our students they learn, right? <laughs> That's what we do. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you for all those messages, folks. Amen. And I believe Reverend Hayward, I'm saying adieu to social media at this time. Uh, just one thing, Pastor, before you go. Oh, uh, yes. We have been saying that, um, you know, there are certain things that we didn't know about Jesus' birth and, and all of that. And one of the slides, it actually said that the Bible was not given in order to teach us everything. And that's true. Right. But the next yeah. slide said, it that responds the to Bible everything. It does not teach us everything. It, it has yes, something an to say that's about right. everything. And so when people will come yeah. to us about evolution or anything like that, the Bible has the answer. When they yeah. want to talk to us about um, our dress or our outlook on things, the Bible has the answer. So while it yeah. doesn't teach us everything, it does have actually the answer for everything. Yeah, and, and you're gonna, now you're going to make me talk at least extra two minutes. Blame Reverend Hay, but don't blame me. Um, that's why as a spirit-led pastor, Holy Ghost field pastor, because I know the Bible has, just like we've learned over these weeks, 
The Bible has everything. It answers to everything. Then I believe I can counsel, I can counsel the drug addict, I can counsel the smoker, I can counsel whomever because I got the Holy Ghost. See, that's what we're moved away from. Now we're, now we're going to sit on cultures of people that don't even believe in the Holy Ghost. Uh, how, how that going to work? Rather than putting your time into praise and worship and learning God's word and finding our answers there, no, we go to other places and the Bible will respond to every situation. It won't, it won't say Maria's da 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 da, but it'll give us it'll give us an example, a lead up, and a, a, a way to combat and deal with it. You see, man say, "Greater is He that is within us, and then He that is in the world." And then go to the world for greatness, for a great response. See, I'm old school right there. So yeah, I'm glad you you brought that up. I heard it, I understood it, and I absolutely believe it. Absolutely believe it with all that is within me. So I don't have to fornicate to teach somebody about how to stay. Um, how to have a marriage healed. I don't have to commit adultery. Right? I don't have to have an abortion. You got to come against that. That's intellectualism. That's interfering with the gospel message. So thank you for saying that. Because they got that out. Definitely going to keep that on TV. Definitely. Because that's how we've watered down Christianity. By going to look everywhere else. And now we've trained the next generation. Oh, leave church until the end. Find this, find that. No, do it God's way. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible. I'm not moving from it. And that's what these catechism teachings are teaching us about. All right? Anything to add to that, anyone? Reverend Hayward, or we can get ready to leave social media? That's correct. All right. Okay, with that in mind, before I say my official goodbye, Mother Grace Adam, you're in the hot seat. Can you pray us off? Us? Yes, my, how you doing? You're waving. All right, can you pray? Close us out in prayer, Mother Adams. Uh, super senior. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Close us Heavenly out in prayer, Mother Adams. Thank you. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this teaching tonight, Father God. Heavenly Father, give us a good rest tonight, Father God. Lord, we thank you. And Father God, we understand that what is going on tonight, Father God, in the right of God. We thank you, God, for all things. Father God, let us all have a good night and a good rest. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. And I receive that rest. I receive that rest right there. God bless you. Those of you on social media, thank you for being with us. Uh, this evening. And as always, I say that if you're looking for a pastor, a church home, well, you are welcome. You are welcome. 98 North Shore Road, Hamilton Parish. Uh, we are the pearl of a church in the middle of the Atlantic. Come and check us out, Shekinah Worship Center. You will not be disappointed. You will be challenged and encouraged to the next level. Thanks again for joining us. And you know what I'm saying. Blessings abound.